Next part here, again, just take notice of this. This is really what we think is key about process monitor to help you evaluate the data more effectively. The basic information or the basic key thing is to evaluate the critical segments of the operation. I talked about a couple here and then we'll go into some more specific examples. Standard deviation of a critical process parameter. For, for example, film stretching. I was working in the roll coating area where we would have a, a molten uh, resin, it'd be a polymer that would be solidifying, it'd be chilled on a roll, and then it would go to a section where you heat it up and it reaches the melting temperature and it can be stretched to make it thinner. The initial thickness of the web might be 60 mils thick, and then it has to be heated up just to the melting point before you can stretch it again to thin it out to the, the thickness that you want. But it's very critical that you don't heat it up too early. If you reach the melting point before it gets to the, the tension roll, then it might start to get flabby and, and the thickness can vary. The way that you do control the thickness, you have a second roller that's operating at a set amount of speed faster than the first one. So as you reach the, the melt point, uh, the film melt ultimately stretches. The second roller may be going 300 feet a minute when the first one is going at 100 feet a minute. And you'll have this three to one uh, adjustment in the thickness where it'll thin out. And, and again, the key parameter measure there is the variability of the temperature of the, the melt or the web as it's reaching the point where it needs to stretch. If you sew on a roll over the, the, the length of the time that the roll is being made, if the variability of that temperature is higher than normal, then you're gonna have thickness variability in your product. And a way to kind of convey that down to the final product, if you're at a, a theater and you're watching a, a projection of the, the, the photograph, on the screen, you'll see variations in color basically as the web thickness changes because the light will pass through the film uh, differently with different thicknesses. So it's, it's just critical that that temperature is steady uh, and consistent for that, for that stretching. Another one is this pressure trace analytics. Um, and I was also involved in the crystal nucleation. It's, it's where you would be combining a silver nitrate stream with a salt stream, whether uh, chlorine or bromine, you'd have a li those two liquid streams coming together and there'd be a reaction happening in a, a thousandths of a second or a few thousandths of a second after these two chemicals are mixed. Right at an atomic level, you know, it'd nucleate to make the, the crystals, the atomic level crystals. All of the process condition, conditions have to be as repeatable and consistent as possible at that instant to make the constant product that you need, which in this case, again, is ultimately a silver halide crystal. And once that, uh, once the nucleation happened, you went through a growth mode where you basically grew these crystals where you wanted to have a very uniform size of all the different dimensions of the crystal. So what, what we did uh, was measure down at up to thousand hertz, we'd be measuring the pressure, flow, temperature profiles at that at this nucleation time. And then we do statistics on it to ultimately show what was varying and, and we make sure that the valves, the temperature elements, all the different elements were operating exactly the same every time you ran a batch, make sure that you ended up having a consistent product. 